how do you survive? You know, the news business is a really tough business for women, I think. Um, partly because some traditional things about, you know, women aren't supposed to get older, uh, women aren't supposed to get fat, uh, women aren't supposed to wear bad clothes, uh, women aren't supposed to have squeaky voices on television, you know, all these sort of things that have never applied to men on television news. Um, it's, it's harder for women in that way. But it's also harder, I think that that's, that becomes less and less of a problem as more women grow up through the ranks and, and more people come to realize, you know, that's an unfair way to judge whether somebody's a good television journalist or not. So I think that's less of a problem today. But what I, I do still see some selective discrimination. I think it's possible to be too pretty. I've never been guilty of this myself, but it is possible to be too pretty on television um, where, where it's tough for people to take certain women seriously on television. There are some very brilliant women I have worked with in television news who will not wear makeup until they go on the air. And the reason, I think, is because they want to be taken seriously. They want, don't want to be seen as that distracting, gorgeous blonde. They want to be seen as very serious, take me for real journalists. And I think um, it's a challenge, actually, for them to be taken seriously. I think it's also hard for women as you get older and you realize so many of us have put so much effort into our careers. And I worked with a lot of women in network news who had never married or had married and divorced or married and divorced and divorced or never had children or have some complicated custody arrangement with their children because the life is hard. It demands a lot of your time and demands a lot of your mental energy. And I think actually it is a better professional life for a younger woman who doesn't necessarily have those time commitments. But then, you know, you need the perspective of, of older women um, to successfully handle newsrooms. But I think younger women um, might be better suited to the lifestyle that you have to live, the ability to get up in the middle of the night. You know, all the time that I worked at CBS, every night I went to bed, there was always the possibility that somebody would call me at three in the morning and say, can you go to? When somebody says, can you go to, they don't mean, can you go? They mean, you are going. Uh, but I don't know how many times people have called me up in the middle of the night and said, all right, can you go to this dam break, this fire, this political event, this plane crash? Can you go to these things right now? And the answer has to be yes. And that is a much harder thing when you have a baby. Well, first when you're married, but then when you have a child um, or your child is old enough to start going to birthday parties and you miss a lot of their lives. Um, that, that's a challenging thing. And I think for women particularly, you want to think about how am I going to manage that? And the, the answer is different for different people. I don't think I got the market cornered on that. But I think it's a reality. It's not, oh, you're the woman, so you have to stay home with your baby anymore. That's good. We're past that. But as a mother, I'll tell you that the hardest thing for me is missing my child. It's not that I have to be home with him. It's that I miss him when I'm away from him. I miss him when I don't know. I missed him when I went to New Orleans after Katrina, and I thought I was gone for two days, and it ended up being four and a half weeks. You know, I miss him. I never wanted to be a correspondent in a war zone after I had a child because, not because I thought I was going to get shot or blown up or anything like that, but because you go to a war zone and you're going to be there four months. And meantime, your baby's going to learn how to walk or talk or have his first birthday or play in a soccer game or all those things. Those are the things that you would miss. It's, it's, the challenges for women of this generation are different. They're not the same as they were for me or for my mother's generation. 
but they're still dramatic and they still are exclusively, I think, a woman's issue that isn't quite the same for boys or men. I think it's always going to be different. Uh, and I don't think that's bad. I just think it's different for men than it is for women.